Hello in your multicolor shirt. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't pay attention to it yet. Wonder what? What, it is. what does he read? How's he doing? A bit of cracking jokes. Making uh, yourself laugh and hurting yourself because, you know, we can't laugh with that open hearts. But anyway, he's doing good. They were uh, he was having to lay on his back for six hours because they had taken that pump out of the groin area. So they had to lay there. He was had about two hours left. Um, <clears throat> and things, but um, he told me he said he told the doctor why didn't he do six bypasses? He wanted to go for the record, and I said, uh, Red, you only have uh, five major arteries. He said, Well. He could have put it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it up to him. Hey. Hey. I, uh, yeah, well, y'all, uh, I um, already called um, Judy when I got word. Wally died today. Oh, um, no. Bless her heart. And so I didn't want, it, just in case she came on while we were doing the prayer, I didn't want her to hear it yeah. uh, in this form, so I called her and told her. Vivian, who lives right across from him, uh, to call and left me a message right before I came online. Yeah, wow. So he went downhill pretty fast because, you know, he was at Glenn's reading room not that long ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's his heart. Yeah. Well, I wonder how old he was. Did he have family? I don't know. Mm. I have known what known of Wally a long time. I, I forgot I know it, knew him, but uh, and he had brought it back to my remembrance because. You know, I hadn't seen him in a long time, you know, and and then when he started coming, he, he reminded me he knew me because he'd been to church and blah, blah, blah. And I sort of remembered him, you know, then. He came when we first started a lot. I think that was when the, the Episcopal Church was in sort of a conundrum about what to do with LGBTQ plus people. And so he came... Um, to lighthouse in the mornings before church and stuff. Okay, I made y'all co-host. Thank you. So y'all can help watch. I, I realized I hadn't made you co-host. <clears throat> didn't see Ron waiting there. Mm -hmm. Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I uh, post to uh, the, the church Facebook page? You can. That's why I was asking. How do I post? You can send it to. Uh, the girls and they can post. To uh, Tammy and Jennifer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can. Oh, I can post. Okay. I'll just. I'll just uh, email you. The, I want to get the information out about the the event in April. Yeah. Been thinking about that. You know, we want to get the word and stuff out, but we need to have a follow up closer because people don't generally. Older folks do, but younger folks don't generally pay it six weeks out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 UAB uh, um, spring break starts on the 10th, I believe. So I wasn't planning on send, uh, sending anything to UAB till after that. Okay. That, yeah, be, that makes sense. Yeah. That'll be a couple of weeks before the event. So. so. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. It's no sense of sending out uh, real early stuff and all. Their mind is on spring break right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's where my mind would be if I was still. Uh, uh, Michael ain't even going to be on spring break, but his mind is on spring break. <laughs> <laughs> With that project, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you get Did you get my text, uh, Pete? Yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Ron is coming in. I get him.
Hey, Ronnie. Hello, how's everyone? Good, how are you? Yeah, I thought you was waving, but that's something in the background. That's a fan, wasn't it? They see fan, it. Oh, I thought I had stopped the video. I'm glad I turned the lights off. <laughs> <laughs> you are so bad. <laughs> Let's do this before we start. <laughs> Well, I'll find out tomorrow if this is my last day of physical torture. Good. <laughs> How often are you doing it? Like three times a week or? Twice. Twice a week. Mondays and Thursdays. I think you need a couple more weeks. <laughs> I think you need a couple brain transplants. <laughs> Child, it's physical torture. I go in there, I feel fine. After they finish working me over, I can hardly walk. But it is, but it is helping. I I I can lift that leg now. Mm -hmm. Pretty high too. Uh, oh, I remember those days when I could lift mine. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh well. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, seven o'clock. <clears throat> oh Lord have mercy. Don't do that again, Ronnie. <laughs> oh Lord. Let's see, stir screen. Uh Y'all see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, praise report. Uh, my neighbor back here had his uh, open heart surgery yesterday. They had to do five bypasses, and uh, his heart was only working 20%. Heart was only pumping 20%. Wow. But he is uh, doing good. He came through the surgery fine, uh, and he's doing good. Uh, went to see him today. <clears throat> and uh, so that was successful. But uh, also, my cousin Mary Jane Bai was ninety, turned ninety eight yesterday, and uh, so I was, you know, remembering her. That's a certainly a praise report. Uh, Chris Lindley has recovered from COVID. Uh, Sandra Schrader's mother Donna got to pray with them before she went to surgery yesterday, and um, and she said she reminded she told me she said. Uh, you know, I watch you every Sunday morning on, on, online. And um, I said, yeah, I found out that. And she said, well, after I get all this behind me, I'm coming to see you. I said, you come on, honey. Come on. Mm -hmm. So anyway, her surgery went very well and successful as well. Um, Sharon Hughes called me yesterday. I, this is a praise report. She called me to check up on me. She'd been watching online and saw where I had the asthma and the leg issue. And so she called to check up on me yesterday. I thought that was kind of nice, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Praise God for that. 
Of course, Bobby is doing better. She's still got to have another stint in several months, and they're watching her. Um, and I, I'm thanking God for that meeting, uh, chance meeting of the program uh, manager for diversity and inclusion. Um, and of course, Mary is and Carol is still excited about the improvement, unexpected improvement of their great granddaughter and her son moving back to the East Coast. Um, down to a prayer. Anybody else have any uh, praise reports? Okay, if not, then um, uh, prayer request. John Siegel now has COVID. <laughs> uh, Chris went back to work, recovered and went back to work, but John's got it now. And also uh, their friend uh, Dixie who passed. Po, top, Pola fell and sprained her arm on Sunday afternoon. Uh, she wasn't at church Sunday. She sent me a text because she uh, had taken uh, Kay, I can't think of Kay's name, last name, uh, to uh, the doctor because she was very sick. Turned out she had COVID. And uh, Pope test has continued to test negative. I talked to her uh, uh, today. Uh, and uh, But she did spring her arm. Uh, and but that's why she didn't come to church Sunday because she found out she'd been exposed, and uh, so that's why she didn't come. Frank Dowdy's father has cancer of the kidneys that has spread. Um, he was at church for the anniversary Sunday. Uh, I still I left Carlos on there because he got to have a complete knee replacement, and of course Carolyn is going to have a, a follow up clean out her knee on surgery on three twenty two, and Jim Ball. Uh, uh, lifts up Melissa Pratt, who has cancer and, ho and hospice. And on top of that, her father died uh, on Saturday, last Saturday. Don's wife is having bone marrow biopsy. They're going to also, she's going to be in the hospital at uh, Vanderbilt for a week, and they're going to try to take care of everything, heart and all, at one time. Uh, Chris and, and Diddle is lifting up Annette McDowell, who need uh, a, a kidney transplant. Uh, we want to keep James and Kelly in prayer. I, I get texts from them. Uh, they are getting better. Um, but uh, And James is almost over his COVID. But, uh, so, and also, uh, I don't know what happened with Jeff today, but he was going, uh, they, there's a mask on, his, on one of his kidneys. And he went today, but I have not heard from him. So I don't know what that is. Continue to keep Julie and Gina in prayer. Uh, Amy Hamby's uh, brother Larry, Alita Alexander's sister Karen, and uh, cousin Sherry, Tim Key's mother at home, but it was re it's requiring him to be there with her. That's why we haven't seen him much. Stephen Dempsey's mother is still in you know, ICU, uh, so we want to keep him in prayer. Um, and uh, uh, as I said earlier, Wally passed today. I don't know any of the details. I'll Call Vivian back. She's the one to call me. <clears throat> and uh, after after life lesson, I'll call her. Uh, the Velowski family is having some life challenges. Uh, uh, Greg is lifting up Vicki Buchanan, who's not responding well to chemo. Uh, Vicki Quinn's mother is in ICU, and and they don't know why she's going down. Um, so, but they're running tests and stuff, and she's really sick. Um, Donna and Lisa's uh, brother-in-law Jeff and. I'll just tell you all, um, the end is near. Uh, so uh, we keep them in prayer. He's the father of uh, Gavin that comes to church with them. Uh, <clears throat> Fran Clark, uh, keeping them. All the trouble spots, um, Ashley, Anna, Lashley, uh, keep uh, Michael uh, and her children in prayer. Uh, Tyra's friend, Lynn. Uh, Pete, uh, Co-worker uh, and Jean and the friend who's divorcing and Linda's younger sister with the issue of blood. Divine guidance for the severely uh, life challenges of the young woman. Bre Brian's mother, who's mental confusion, and John, whose brother died suddenly. And some unspoken prayer requests there. Anyone else have any additional prayer requests? If not, then this calls for a word of prayer. Lord of God, Mother and Father, to us all, we come before you. We thank you for the 
Uh, just thank you for the praise reports. Uh, we give you honor and, and, and glory for the things you have done in our lives. And, and we thank you for those people who have been touched and ate better. And yet, God, we seem overwhelmed by the prayer requests, the losses of life, the uh, sickness and the uh, diseases and life challenges that people are faced with. But we know that you're a good God. And we know that you care about us. And so, God, we just lift them before you and we ask for your grace and your mercy to be manifested in your will and time in their lives. We place them before the throne of grace because you told us to bring them there. And now we leave them there with you. And we also ask that you would also be with us in this life lesson tonight as we finish up loving you with, our, with all our minds. Open our ears and our eyes spiritually to see and hear that we might find a word that encourages our heart. But we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let me stop sharing. And did you get the update, Michael? Uh, yes. This Thank you. Good. We're going to move very fast through, uh, let me get my tablet here so I can do my thing. Um, we're not going to do much of a recap because we recap last week because we were off that week uh, of, of, of uh, what we've done, but we're just going to uh, hit and then get to those last four uh, things on our uh, handout. Uh, that you all got. Uh, this is the uh, this is part B. Uh, I mean, this is uh, part two. Loving God with all your mind, and of course, uh, it's uh, the whole lesson. All four parts is based on uh, Mark twelve, uh, where Jesus is asked the question, "What's the most important thing in life?" And he responds, "Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and mind." And so. Uh, we're looking at the most important thing is to love God. And so we're looking at, uh, we look already at loving God with all your heart. Uh, this is loving God with all your mind. Next week, we will begin loving God with all your soul. And so uh, I'm just going to, uh, the first part where we talked about uh, the three things to know about our mind, we're going to skip that down to uh, the, go down to the, eight practical ways to love the Lord with all your mind. And uh, we're just going to give you, uh, just mention those so we can get to the, <clears throat> excuse me, get to the others. Uh, the first one was to, uh, we have to meditate upon God's truth. And we saw that out of that verse, what that means is that whatever is true. And God is saying that um, we need to meditate on God's word. Uh, we use the Greek word, uh, Alathenos, uh, which means things that won't let you down, things that you can depend on. And God's saying, if you focus your mind on those things that are true, then it won't let you down. It's going to help you. And when it, and one of the ways it's going to help you is worries begin to subside in your life. And that's where we start with that. Um, and so meditate, focus in your mind on God. Um, brother? Okay. And the second one was appreciate God's worth, appreciate what God is doing in our lives. And we have the quote from Philippians um, 3 and 8, that yes, everything else is worthless compared with the priceless gift of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. And so um, that was the second piece, was to appreciate God's worth, which fits with whatever is noble. Yeah. Okay, and then um, if I can scroll up here to my next one, I think I pulled up the wrong thing here. Uh, it's cooperate with God's plan, whatever is right. Um, the word right has to do with the way we make decisions. And so what, 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 what this is really telling us is uh, the right things are God's direction and God's will for our lives. And so uh, you know, 
the scripture says the plans of God stand firm forever. The purpose of God's heart to all generate. God's plan always enrich your life. It always help bless your life and benefit others. And it lines up with God's word and bring God's glory. So uh, cooperate with that plan because whatever is right is, uh, is going to help you love God with all your mind. I'm operating from memory because I think I pulled up the wrong thing. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. You're next. Okay. And the fourth one, the last one we did <clears throat> last week was appropriate See. God's cleansing, whatever is pure. And we have two quotes from Psalms there. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. And the other is, you know, oh, wash me. Cleanse me from this guilt. Let me be pure again. And we talked about there might be two questions. You know, am I, uh, if I really ask God to cleanse my life of sin, am I going to be looked upon as someone who really doesn't know what's going on or someone who's stuck my head in the sand? Can you scroll down a little more? Um, that was the first question. And then the second one um, is, well, what if I sin again? Do I have to keep going to God again and again and asking God to cleanse me. And one of the things that we talked about was how Jesus really knew what was going on, right? He, Jesus didn't have his head stuck in the sand. He knew what the Roman Empire was doing. He knew what the religious authorities were doing. And so he didn't um, stick his head in the sand and we're not required to put our head in the sand either. And I liked uh, the quote from Philippians 2 and 12, 13, from the First Nation version that says, so then with great respect, you must walk the path creator has given you for being set free and made whole. For the great spirit is creating in you the desire and strength to do what pleases the great spirit. So in other words, there's a path for us to walk that the great creator has for us the great spirit and walking on that path is not going to require us to put our heads in the sand in fact we'll be um fully aware of what's going on but we'll see what god has in store for us and i think that brings us to today's lesson so the last four things uh yes and i'm having trouble pulling it up on my screen <laughs> For a minute, oh, give me just a second. I don't know what's going on with this. Uh, it usually just pulls right up. Uh, 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 let's see here. Sorry, guys. I'm. I had it pulled up a minute ago, and I, I this. Uh, hold on, just a second. Oh, my drive. And twenty twenty four. And prior to living, this one, and part two, part three, and here we go. Okay, sorry guys. I, 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 one of those things that happen. Okay. Okay. Um, number five was you anticipate God's abundance. Uh, you anticipate God's abundance. And what, and what that really was speaking to was whatever things are lovely. Uh, the meaning behind and the action behind whatever's lovely uh, is, is you, uh, 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 you're anticipating uh, God's abundance. Now, the word lovely here really is speaking to things that are really enjoyable. What is it that when you see it, uh, 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 it brings a sense of enjoyment into your life. That's what First Peter uh, 6 and uh, 17 is talking about when it says, God richly gives us everything to enjoy. That's why God gave it to us. When we make a commitment and we say yes to walking in relationship with God and in fellowship with Jesus, uh, Romans 6 and 4 says, you were given God's wonderful new life to enjoy. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody who claims to be a follower of, of Christ act that way. It doesn't mean that all the followers of, of the way act the way that way about God, towards God in, the, in this world. 
Uh, all you have to do is look look no further than the climate deniers who don't see anything wrong with raping and pillaging uh, the resources of this planet with no thought uh, of how they will leave it for generations that will come after us. Um, but if you're going to love God with all your heart, you, you begin to love to enjoy, learn to enjoy God with this mind that God has given us because that's the way we build. And now loving God with all, loving the things of God also means that, uh, you know, alt oftentimes we love to be entertained. We love to be, learn, we love to enjoy things. And so this is really saying, let God entertain, not entertain us in the frivolous way. Uh, 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 you know, like you would enjoy a movie or something, but enjoy, learning to enjoy and be entertained by the greatness of God. God's love working in your life and, and the life of others around you. Uh, that's something that's lovely to enjoy. Uh, seeing someone get an insight uh, and sharing that insight, that's, that, that's, uh, that, that's God's work in, in a person's life. And, and that, that's entertaining to us. I don't mean, in, remember, I don't mean entertaining in this, the lowest sense of the word. Um, being entertained by the beauty of God, you know, like a beautiful sky or of the of the clouds, watching the clouds in amazement. That's entertaining. We were walking this morning, and the clouds uh, were just moving so fast, and, and we stopped and we took note of it. That's entertain. That's uh, entertaining. And so, if you can enjoy dwelling on all the lovely things that God gifts into our lives during the daily path of walking, it will be the key for us learning to love God with all our minds. When we start doing that, we start seeing God and we start serving God and we start seeing others and serving others. And that's a key uh, to loving God with all our mind instead of letting useless, ugly nonsense be the things that entertain us. Now, I believe that what, this is probably one of the major areas that a lot of folks who claim to be Christian miss out on. Uh, because whatever you're doing, whether you're doing it with your significant other or your child or your vacation or doing it at work, whatever you're doing, we need to stop and see the loveliness in it, recognize and take time to see the abundance of God and the gifts of God, and how God wants us to enjoy these things. Uh, like I said a few moments ago, even if you're just looking up at the sky, just take a moment and be in, entertained by the creativity of God, of what God can make and what God can do. I think watching those things, looking at those things, helps us to then begin to really love God with all of our minds. And, and and you learn to really enjoy who God is. And, and I put down here um, three uh, quick things about uh, ways to enjoy God. One of them, I, I, I talked about enjoy God's character. What do I mean by that? Enjoy the, enjoy the fact that God is a faithful God. When is the last time... Uh, you took the time to just enjoy that wonderful fact that God is a faithful God. Oh, enjoy the fact that God is a God whose love never, never ceases. You know, what, what would that do for us if we took 30 second, a 30 second vacation in the middle of the day uh, where you just sort of sit back in your chair and, and close your eyes and just enjoy the fact that God's never going to not love you? God is never going to not be cheering on for what's best for your life. Uh, what a difference that might make just a, uh, for a minute. Take a minute of your time to enjoy that and then be ready for the rest of your day. That's what I mean by enjoying uh, God's character. Uh, I know, I what is her name? What was her name? It's been so long. It used to be at Grace Episcopal Church. Uh, there was a, a woman minister there, and she used to say that uh, she would stop in the middle. She tried to stop like three or four times a day and just five minutes, just close her eyes and think about the goodness of God. Just think about what 
God is doing in her life and what a difference that made. So that's what I mean by enjoying God's character. The other thing was enjoy God's creation. Enjoy the things that God made by recognizing that the creator of this universe made it. <clears throat> the creator of this universe made it. Recognize the creative hand of God around us, even in our lives in so many ways that if we only look, take the time to look, maybe that's what Jesus meant when he said on, on, on several occasions, those who have eyes see, see, those who have ears to hear, hear. Maybe he was trying to get us to understand, hear, see, and recognize the lovely things that come from the creative hand of God that is all around us if we just pause and look. And then the third thing was enjoy God's care. Uh, enjoy the way God cares for you the way God loves us, the way God is concerned for us. Uh, enjoy those moments when God sent that right person at the right time, with just the right words that you need to hear. Or you come across that right passage of scripture uh, that speaks to you in that moment, or maybe that devotion that you needed that day. That sort of happened to me this morning when I was sitting on the steps waiting for Jonathan to come out, as I always do. And I was doing my meditation. <laughs> and the past, the, the, one of the, my devotions this morning just spoke to me that I began to cry. Uh, well, I didn't cry, boo-hoo, but tears came to my eyes. And, uh, and then it began to speak to me, remember what you're preaching on this Sunday. You can use this. So some of y'all gonna hear that this Sunday, okay? Uh, so and, and and so that's a lovely that you know that's what we mean by um, enjoying God's care. And here and I I would just put a cautionary note here. Let's stop blaming God when we don't follow God's leading, and then don't take God's advice and things don't work out. Uh, instead of asking God why. Maybe we need to start back up and take a step and look at what we're doing and try to get on, on uh, back in sync with God because uh, I believe it will certainly be beneficial. So take a take a moment during your day when when we're talking about uh, anticipate God's abundance. Take a moment and, and just um, just just enjoy. Uh, when, even when things have gone haywire, this has been a busy day. I've had hospital runs and all that kind of stuff today, in addition to all of this. And so, but take a moment to enjoy God's love and God's care and God's faithfulness. That will get you, that's how you get to the place of where you begin to naturally love God with all your mind. Pete? Okay. And the next one, if you'll scroll in, Michael, is six, is communicate what you see of God in others. <clears throat> and this relates to whatever is admirable. Um, so what we're going to be doing is, you know, looking at those things that we find admirable in others or worth talking about, um, you know, the admirable ways that they may be living their lives. And so, you know, Philippians 4 and 8 tells us, think about things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine good things in others. So one example may be, we may look and see a person, um, another member of the church, um, someone that we work with, who we think sort of has a heart like God's, or who has grace that they wouldn't have without being in connection with God. And when we see those gifts that that person exhibits, we can let them know, you know, I see something of God in you. Um, when you are kind to others or kind to animals or whatever it is. And then we can tell them about that admirable quality. Um, so we're communicating what we see in them. Um, you know, one of the things in this section is if we're going to love God, we've got to love the people that God made. And that sometimes is not easy. So if we're going to love God with all our minds and all our thoughts, we're going to have to love people with our thoughts as well. And an issue that may come up here is 
you know, it's often easy for us to see um, the faults of others. Um, and it may be hard for us to see our own faults. Some of us may see our own faults too readily, but it is easy sometimes to see the faults of others. And I think loving God with all our minds um, involves looking at others through two related lenses. I think the first lens is we need to see them or look at them as beloved children of God, just as we are. No better than us and no worse than us. And when we do that, we don't have to lie about the fact that they may have some faults or pretend they don't have faults, because um, we certainly have plenty of faults, but we're still beloved children of God. The second lens that I think is related to that is to look at what's best or good in others. What do they do that's admirable? And by using these two lenses, I think we'll have a balanced and humble view of others and of ourselves. Um, we acknowledge that they too are beloved children of God and that they too have good qualities that are admirable. In an exercise that I did one time, I'll keep it kind of short, was I had a real issue with someone, uh, it was actually my father, and I was asked to think of the things that he gave me that were of value. And when I started doing that, it was really liberating for me to realize that, yeah, I did get value and he did um, have good qualities and things that were admirable, um, even though I may not have wanted to see them. And so I think, you know, doing that is important, using those two lenses. They're our sibling, you know, another creation of God, and also they do have good qualities and they do have things that are admirable um, and, and what are they? And, and have an eye for those. And part of this, another mental exercise here that can work with anyone, thinking about anyone, and I also think we can use this to think about ourselves. So um, even a person that we struggle the most with, and some of us, the person we struggle the most with is ourselves. So let's start to think about that person in terms of what they would be like if they really lived as they knew and fully acted on the fact that they were God's creation and God's child. And we can do that, take that same thing and look at ourselves and think about ourselves in terms of what we would look like if we really lived as though we knew and fully acted on the fact that we are God's creation and God's child. So what would they be like if they began to act out fully and live fully as followers of Jesus? And conversely, what would we be like if we were to begin to act out and live fully as a follower of Jesus? So I think it can go both ways because that's the way God sees all of us, right? What would it be like if we put our faith into action to follow Jesus and to seek out and live out the hopes and dreams that God has for our lives. And that's true for us, and that's true for others. And I believe that's one of the reasons um, why God sent Jesus to help us be become whole or to move towards wholeness. I don't know that we're ever going to get there on this earth, but we can move in that direction. And so in the words of one of Jesus' favorite lines, you know, Go forth and do likewise. That's what we need to be doing. And that's what we need to do with the person we have the hardest time with. Look at them as a fellow child of God and look at the good things and qualities they have. They've got some. We may not want to admit it, but there's something that they have that's a good quality. And there are people, you know, we see God in, they give encouragement to others they engage in simple acts of love. They act out of compassion. They're doing something to make a difference in our world. You know, we can see something of God in them. And if we want to love God with all our minds, 
we can tell them about it. For example, we can tell them, as you know, mentioned earlier, we see, um, you know, you acting like Jesus when you do whatever, um, when you take care of others, when you stand up for um, the less fortunate, when you demand justice. Um, it really showed me what God was like when I saw you treating whatever, this person this way or this animal this way. But better yet, we can try to emulate their actions, right? If they can do those things, maybe we can as well. So it's going to do a lot for their heart, too, um, if we say to them, you know, we really appreciate what you're doing and we see God living and working in you when you do these things. And we can communicate how we see God in the being of actions and others. Um, we can also oh. see how God um, uses those people and can use us to impact the world in a positive way, to further the kingdom of God on earth. And I think that's done um, in most of our lives in very small ways, right? We have a choice of how we relate to the person at the checkout counter. And you know, that's a simple way of spreading you know, love, mercy, and grace is do we treat them as a human being or do yeah. we treat them like crap and, and blame them because the store didn't have something on the shelf? Mm -hmm. So whatever is admirable, let's look at that in other people and look at that in ourselves and then communicate it when we see God in others. And with that, I'll pass it to JR. Now, the next one sort of plays off of some of the stuff that, uh, uh, that uh, Pete just shared. And, and number seven is motivate uh, your days by God's greatness. That sounds so high, doesn't it? <laughs> but 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 let's, let's bring it down to earth. Uh, we're talking about that part of that scripture said, if there's anything excellent, think on it. Think on it. Uh, the word excellent means any mental excellence, any moral quality or any physical power in any of those ways if there's if there's something excellent in it think on those things I don't follow the uh I don't follow the um Olympics like I used to I used to be one of those Olympic gymnasts uh, not gymnasts <laughs> <laughs> what is the word I'm trying to use um uh, I followed it I love the Olympics I, I was a nerd for the Olympics. Enthusiast. <laughs> huh? Enthusiast. Yes. Well, that, that's a nice way of saying it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I, and of course, I remember when it came to Atlanta, getting several tickets to different events. But the last one that I, I really, really got into was the one in Be Beijing that had that unbelievable uh, opening ceremonies with the guy riding a bicycle around the track and all that stuff. But in that particular Olympics, I, what I really remember is, is the display of excellence that uh, we saw from an American and a Jamaican. Uh, the American was, of course, uh, Michael Phelps, and the uh, Jamaican was Usain Bolt. And, um, and, and they had spent their lives to be excellent in their sport, and, and it just showed through. And, and, and just watching them, uh, you know, inspired a lot of people. Uh, you know, there were people who were thinking, I can do that. Well, not maybe as, as good as Michael Phelps, or I can do that, not as run as good as uh, Usain Bolt. But, but seeing people do that sometimes does something to you. It draws you, um, it draws you, you to a higher, your mind to a higher place. And now whether we can match the towel or not, that's a different story. But it does bring inspiration in people's lives. Seeing that kind of thing has a way of bringing inspiration in people's lives. And um, just think what would happen if we would take time and notice and really focus on the greatness of God and the excellence of God in the things that God brings before us in people that God brings in our lives. Uh, one of the, you know, uh, I, I look at the people on this on, on the screen right here. How you, I can see God's greatness in you in different ways. With Judy, uh, her 
her making me a heretic has expanded my mind in ways I never would have expanded without the reading room. Uh, with Jonathan, you know, on our walks and the talks we have, they, they, they encourage me. Like this morning, he asked a question, and it just brought out all my thoughts. <laughs> you remember that, Jonathan? And I, I said, now, and I probably went on longer than what he asked, but that, that, that's the kind of thing that happens when you see when other people inspire you like that. And, and just think about what that would do uh, in our lives, if we really focus on the greatness and the excellence of God. Uh, you know, so many of us going through a lot of stuff in our lives. I mean, and we just, sometimes we don't, we don't realize how badly we need to be inspired. And so I want to share a, a, a passage with you that's right there from Psalms 145, 2 through 6, uh, from the New Century Version of the Bible. Because this... This was. This is. Uh, I think if we need to think on something that is excellent to inspire us, and he, uh, the psalmist said, "I will praise you every day. I will praise you forever and ever. God is a great. God is great and worthy of our praise. No one can understand how great God is. Parents will tell their children what you have done." They will retell your mighty acts, wonderful majesty and glory. And I think about your miracles, that they will tell about the amazing things you do. And I will tell how great you are. My neighbor, Red, Red who had the open heart surgery yesterday, um, that man is a walking miracle. Jonathan knows this story too. You know, at one time he was over 400 pounds, uh, bad diabetes, all this stuff. He he doesn't even take diabetes medicine. He doesn't take uh, uh, medicine for di diabetes anymore. It, it, his sugar and stuff is so in, in, in regulated. He was hit head on by a trailer tractor, mangled. He's got all kinds of screws in his walk, and yet he survived. Uh, he had stage four cancer. Today, he's cancer free. I mean, you know, when you think about the greatness of, now, Jonathan, am I lying? You, Jonathan, we uh, know all of these things to be true. And um, and now he's had this bypass, this uh, five bypass with his heart only working 20%, and he's laying up there in the bed laughing and telling the doctor he should have went for the record with six bypasses, you know, <laughs> and that kind of thing. But that's telling about the amazing things God does. He gives God the glory. Uh, and, and, and these verses right here are just one set of many, many verses in the Bible that talk and speak to us about how uh, God's greatness, and that's a place to start. Focus on God's greatness. Uh, think about your life. You know, none of us have perfect lives. We all have struggles. But God has brought us through a lot of stuff. It's so easy to focus on what's not happening. Believe me, I know. It's easy to forget the great things God did for us yesterday or a year before. And so I think we need to create a record so we can go back and focus on it. Uh, you know, when it comes to the Olympics, they keep records so that you can go back and focus on what someone did four, eight, 16, 32 years ago, whatever. We need to keep a record of what God's done in our lives. I think that's one of the failures of it. I think that's why the praise list is so small and the prayer list is so long, because we don't keep a record of all the answered prayers that God has put in our life. And when you begin to create a record of answered prayers, when you got a bad day, open it and stop. Open it up and start to read down through it. Let it lift your spirit. Uh, let it give you a sense of hope. Uh, look at the record what God's done. It'll inspire you. And, and it also will build your faith. It will build your faith. From time to time when I'm feeling poorly about myself, and yeah, the pastor does feel poorly about himself at times, I, 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 I go searching through my member banks. I don't have a written record, but I go searching through the memory, and I can see those points in my life. Or if it, it, it's the old songs, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, 
Where would I be? Where would I be? And, and, and I find motivation in what God has done. And, and when we help, when we find motivation what God does, it lasts longer than two weeks after, like after the Olympics. Uh, you know, I remember, what was that guy? The, that wonderful race of the American, the oldest uh, swimmer in on the Americans team. What was his name? Jason Lisak, I think it was. Yes, that was his name. Jason Lisak who slammed the ankle leg of that race. Now, all the great swimmers that swam before him uh, on the team, and he swam the lap of his life to catch up with whoever was in front of him and win that uh, relay race. And, and when he was asked, <laughs> you know, you're not known for record time and so forth, uh, he said, I was inspired by the greatness of those who went before me. Learn to be inspired by the greatness of the things God has done in your life already, and and, uh, and that's what uh, that's what uh, the writer means by "I'll praise you day by day. I will praise you forever and ever." And Psalm and uh, the Bible says in Psalm thirty-five, uh, twenty-seven, "Praise the greatness of the Lord, who loves to see God's children do well." Who loves to see God's children. And I changed that word right there. It said servant. And no, I don't think God is wanting us to be thinking of ourselves as God's servant. I think God wants us to think of ourselves as God's children. And uh, and so you praise the greatness of God, and then you begin to do well as God's children. That's how it works in life. Motive, you know, you motivate yourself day by day, moment by moment, to God's greatness, and and then you allow that to motivate you to really give your best. And it allows you to begin to develop in your mind by watching, by concentrating on those things that are excellent. It, it gives you motivation and it calls you to fix your mind on things that motivate your life by God's greatness and all those things that are excellent in your life. Pete? So the next one, Michael, if you'll scroll down. <laughs> Thank you, is um, celebrate what God is doing. And that is, you know, that means if anything is praiseworthy, we need to let our minds dwell on that, think about that. And then look at the tense of the verb um, that we're using here. Um, it's the present tense. It's not on what God did, which was some of what uh, JR was talking about, looking back on what God's done for us um, to but it is what is God doing for us right now, those praiseworthy things. And I think it's easier sometimes to see the evidence of God looking backwards than it is in the present moment. But what we're asked about here is celebrate what God is doing now in the present um, in our life. Um, you know, we can lift your eyes as, to see what God is doing all around the world then you will say, truly the Lord's great power goes far beyond our borders. Um, and, you know, that's one to remember. And then God will keep, um, I'll get to that in a minute. So that, keep that one in mind, you know, to, to lift up what's God doing right now. I think one of the problems with modern Christianity, and I've seen it some, is that when folks read the Bible or they get in debates about it, they read it as something that happened historically. And the importance becomes, is it literally true? And I think J.R. likes to quote the priest that I heard say, you know, every word in the Bible is true and some of it actually happened. And the reason for that is, rather than looking at what God did in the situation, you read it historically, did this happen and arguing about it um, or, or getting hung up on that, I think it's more powerful for us to look at what God did in the situation and why that might be important for us in our present situation. How does that scripture show us that God loves us and that God um, can use us to further God's work on earth right here in Birmingham in the 21st century? Yes, and we yes. see the people that God uses often are the outcasts often are those um, 
that you wouldn't think that God would use. They're just like us, right? They're not the high and the mighty. And God wants us to read God's word into our lives as something that's going to happen today, right now. And that's praiseworthy. What's God doing in our lives right now? So I like to think about it this way. Let's think about Exodus. I think it's one thing to see God as freeing the Israelites from slavery and bondage in Israel as a historical fact, right? That's one thing. But I think seeing God as a God of liberation, not only for the Israelites in Egypt, but for yes. us and for those living today is quite another matter and when I ask myself, what's the more powerful message? It's God as the liberating God before, presently, and in the future. And so I think that's the message that God wants us to hear when we read Exodus. God's not done being a liberator. God's still there. And I think about the way that Black prophetic teaching has used God's word in Exodus and other stories to show us what God is capable of doing and still wants to do to bring justice in the world. You think about how J.R. and the pastors at Covenant before him have used God's word to show the LGBTQ plus community that we are beloved children of God, that God loves us and wants the best for us. And that's why I think those messages are strongest, not as historical fact, but how do they speak to us today? What do they show about the truth of God um, and how God's going to be there? And one of those truths is sort of, you know, what's God doing through our church? And we may be so close that we don't see the great things that get done in our, in our church. We don't see necessarily the lives that get affected. And JR from time to time will share with us some of the emails and cards that he gets so that we can be encouraged by how our small efforts have helped people realize that God is still at work, that God loves them, that they're God's children, that God is still speaking, that there's not a period behind the sentences of scripture, but there's a comma. And that's humbling, right? That's also praiseworthy. We can look at the ways that God is using us in our small congregation. And I really believe that the human willpower is not enough for us. And it's not enough for our church. And if we operate our lives on pure willpower, if we use our egos to ease God out, if covenant that would do the same, we would really fall flat on our face because it's the power of God and God's help at work in us and at work in our congregation that allows us to do the things um, to further God's kingdom on earth. And so we might want to take a moment today and say, thank you, God, for the incredible things that you're doing right now. Yes. yes. You know, we thank you for what you've done in the past, but look at what's going on right now. And let's try to get a picture of how sort of all this comes together when we take all of these ways we've been talking about, when we think about good, honorable, right, pure, lovely things, and really begin to turn our thoughts to God. In Isaiah 26 and 3 says, God will keep in perfect peace all those who trust in God, whose thoughts turn often to the Lord. And so God's going to give us perfect peace, right? If we can give God our trust, if we can turn our thoughts to what God is doing, those are worthy they're praiseworthy and we should be thinking them. And the other thing to think about is when we turn our thoughts to God, we can barely get a taste of all God has to offer. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry that God's going to run out of things, uh, that we're going to run out of things to think about when we think about God. And I like the uh, inclusive Bible's version of 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. Of this wisdom it is written, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it so much as dawned on anyone what God has prepared for those who love God. 
In other words, it's beyond our comprehension. There are wonderful things that we can't see, we can't hear, that if it even dawned on us that God is capable of. And in some senses, we could almost think about that as a challenge, like God saying, I dare you. You know, try to think of all the great things I have planned for you in this world and the next. Try to think of all the great things that I could do with you. Um, you know, and, and let me know when you're done, because I don't think you're going to be able to even come up with how great it's going to be. But go ahead and try. I don't think God's offering, you know, saying that as a challenge. But I think sometimes if we limit God, we need to realize that we're limiting God because of our perception because of our limited vision, because of our limited hearing, not because of God's limit. And so Jesus said the first commandment, the greatest thing that we could do um, was to love the Lord with all your heart um, and all your mind um, and all your soul. And we'll get to that um, next week. But to love God with your mind means we have to turn our thoughts to God. Yes. Almost think of that as sort of a steering wheel, right? You know, the car is going to head, I think, whatever direction we're looking. So if we're not careful, we're looking out sideways, we're going to start turning that car that way. Um, and some of us may not even know where we're heading. We're just kind of going down the road. Okay, whatever. Um, but if you've ever driven a car that pulls in one direction, um, which I have, I've had some cars that would pull to the right or the left, you know, that's going to, we're going to get pulled in that direction. And our thoughts can do the same thing, right? So think about it this way. If if we're in the middle of self-pity, our thoughts can be pulled in that direction. If it might be unforgiveness or bitterness, if we're bitter for someone or unforgiving uh, because of things that happen in our life, our thoughts may go in that direction. But if we, by faith and with God's help, put our hands on the steering wheel of our minds and say, God, direct my attention to those eight things in Philippians 4 and 8, or the one that I need to be focused on right now, then we can go in a different direction. We can turn our thoughts, uh, start to love God with all our thoughts and all our minds. And that's because God will help us because God made us responsible for our thoughts and gave us the ability to change channels and because God has given us the mind of Christ. And so that with that gift and with God's help, we'll be able to change the focus of our thoughts. And it may not be easy. If our thoughts have been pulling us in the wrong direction for a long time, the, the thoughts may pull us pretty hard in that direction. In the first few times or many, maybe many times that we try to refocus our thoughts, we may start to think, I can't do that. Um, it's going to take all the strength I have and I'm just not capable of it. But we don't have to do it on our own, right? Because God's there to help us to head in God's direction. And we can ask God to remove our fear or remove our self-pity, remove our bitterness and direct us to what God would have us be, direct yes. us in the right way, the way that we're meant to live. Um, you know, and that's where the Bible tells us God will keep in perfect peace all those who trust in God, whose thoughts turn often to the Lord. So we need God's help to do that. It's not like we have to do it. We can ask God to help us do that. So here's some practical homework that we um, thought might be useful for all of us, you know, in, in the way to take the steering wheel in at least one way, turn it in the right direction with God's help this week. You know, take one of the eight things we've talked about and get start with one, whatever one that seems to work for you. It, cut, it could be, I'm going to think about what God's doing in the world as much as I can, or I'm going to find motivation in God's greatness and not my success this week, or I'm going to look for what's best in other people. I'm going to enjoy God more. I'm going to ask God to cleanse my mind. I'm going to ask God to help me make better decisions in a different way with a different filter. 
I'm going to value God more by giving God what's valuable to me, my time, my heart, my life, my money, my talents, my gifts, or I'm going to meditate on God's word. Whatever one of those, you know, let's you know, pick it and then do it. And if you can't decide on which of the eight to do, maybe the last one makes the most sense to meditate on God's word, to take Philippians mm -hmm. four and eight, memorize it and meditate on it and asking for God's help to live out um, that word um, as a reality um, in our life. And so um, that's all I have. I'm going to turn it over to JR and then we'll open it up for discussion. Yeah, uh, I wonder if you realize that Exodus that you were talking about is the lectionary for this week. <laughs> yeah, it but, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, and I was thinking as you were saying that great scripture as a person think when you're talking about you know the where you turn your thoughts if you turn that steering wheel it's all good because I, I thought about that scripture says a person thinks in his heart his or her heart so is that person. And one other thing is you were talking about sometimes we don't realize. Uh, what you know, God is the impact that God is making through us at Covenant. I I just want to share this. I got it uh, the other day, uh, this week rather. Pastor, I have to share something with you. Several years ago, Covenant did a prayer bear for my father, my dad, when he was diagnosed with kidney cancer. A few weeks ago, my dad found out that the cancer had returned and had spread to other parts of his body. He's going in the morning to have a biopsy done that will determine where the cancer is and what the treatment plan will be. I spoke with him on the phone a while ago, and he told me that he, that the bear would be going to the hospital with him tomorrow. At first, I didn't know what he was talking about. Then he reminded me of us giving him the bear. And then he said, the bear helped me beat cancer once. He's going to help me do it again. So I'm just saying all of this to say that uh, is that. That's certainly Covenant's mission statement of offering hope, showing faithfulness, and sharing joy in action. If that's not it, I don't know what it is. Uh, also, please lift them in prayer, and my mom as well, as they stand in the gap. That was Frank Dowdy, Dowdy who uh, sent that to me. We saw him on the prayer list. Um, and so it makes a difference. And we make a difference when you think about it. Uh, makes a difference. Anybody? Got something they want to add? Yeah, I do. Uh, in talking about celebrating what uh, what God is doing now, uh, I don't, over the, the last few months or so, I guess I have been <clears throat> thinking more and more of the people that have been brought into covenant that's adding to the family and their, their gifts and their talents and how they're wanting to do things, their passion for everything. And that's just adding so much to the people that are already were already there that have that same passion and everything. And so, you know, God's continuing to to bless the church that way. But then I think sometimes we forget that even, even people that probably would never go, never enter the doors of covenant are helping us. You know, with uh, with various things. I mean, I, I I guess with this group, most uh most people know about uh some of them, uh, whether it's uh, helping out with doing grants and stuff and everything like that, or sending over a a pallet of uh, hygiene items and everything to give to the houseless. So there are people. Covenant has made an impact on the community already. And God is going to continue to use covenant. And we we just need to be, I think, more aware of of the opportunities that we can 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 reach out and you know and further that that vision of uh, uh, of reaching out and helping people and doing being faithful and offering hope and showing up, showing joy, sharing joy. But uh so that's something that's impressed me over the last few months, and and it has even made me more excited about the uh, the future. Um, and I was telling somebody today, I don't think we could have done that in Centerpoint. I think God has put us 
in uh, the medical district, put us in Lakeview or wherever, and uh, has a plan for us. And we need to be willing to to have to keep our eyes open and our hearts open and our minds open to see all that uh, that he has for us to do. And it's I think it's an exciting time. Yeah, you're on mute. You're on mute. Oh, my my screen froze up and disappeared for a moment. I I've never had that. I've had it freeze before, but it didn't disappear. And I went to sign back in, it just came, it just all came back up. Uh Jonathan did something to my screen. I'm sure he did. But anyway, thank you, Ron. Froze again. Yeah, you froze again. Maybe his connection. Um, probably. Well, anybody else have anything while JR is frozen? <laughs> Hopefully anyone not. else? So you froze for a good bit. So I don't know if you were saying anything after you said thank you, Ron, but you were. He froze again. You froze again. Yeah. yeah. It's like his packets are just getting, yeah. Almost. But it's it's like it's it's he's, he's buff, you know, like it happens when it's buffering. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, awesome. You are the host. Oh, wait a minute. My thing says I'm the host now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's him calling. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, you're off now. Can you sign back in? Yeah, we're still here. And if not, uh, if not, people uh, will close us out. Okay, all right. All right, mm -hmm. he, he said for you to close out. Okay, does anybody have anything else they want to add before we uh, close out for the evening? Well, Jonathan, would you pray us out? Okay. Uh, oh, well, where did y'all go? Then all of a sudden, y'all disappeared. Okay. Can you hear me? I can yes. hear you. Oh, there it is. It came back. All right. Let's 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 have a word. Gracious Father, gracious God, we just thank you for this evening. We hope that your words are falling on good ground and that it will be nourishment to us as we think about developing this relationship with you and and having our minds on you. And I know it's just going to be a, a great situation. It's going to be a great improvement for everyone, each one of us, as we think over these things. We ask you now to lead and guide us throughout this week. Keep us safe. And we'll be ever so careful to give you all the honor, all the glory, and the praise. In that son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. All righty. Y'all have a good evening. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Good night.